large city and in the territory on West. There's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Bartender, set out another bottle of that rye whiskey. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Thatcher, you just tell us once more about this stud colt you got up. Huh? He's a good colt, Mr. Butler. Uh-huh. And a running colt, you tell me. He can run some. Some? About the fastest thing in these parts, I hear. <laughs> You're making fun of me, Mr. Butler. You and your friends. Oh, I don't know why you should think that. Out here in Dodge, we're all interested in good horse flesh. Especially when it's some sort of a fancy new breed. Quarter horse, you call it, huh? If you don't mind, I'll be going now. Oh, no. <laughs> Not yet, Mr. Thatcher. We'd all like to hear some more about your stock, wouldn't we, boys? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Butler, my grandson's waiting for me outside. Hey, Thatcher, tell us again about this little old sawed-off colt of yours. I understand these new type horses you raise have rumps so high they look like they're going downhill. Hank, <laughs> <laughs> it ain't polite to call this colt that way. Besides, it ain't that he's sawed off. It's just that he's got no back. His withers run right into his throat. <laughs> he, he's quarter horse and three quarters what else? <laughs> I guess this is all fun for you, but you got no call. Oh, now, boys, I do believe Thatch is upset. Here, let me pour you another drink. No, thanks. I'll be going. No, that just ain't sociable. Here, have a drink. I said no, Mr. Butler. Drink it. I'm old enough to be your father, Mr. Butler, and I'll drink when I want and with who I want. You ornery old goat, I'll pour this whole stinking bottle down your throat. All right, Butler. That's enough. Evening, Marshal Diller. Mr. Thatcher, your grandson's waiting outside in the buckboard. You better get along home, huh? Yeah. Thank you, Marshal. Thank you very much. <laughs> Old fool. Bragging on the quarter coat he's so proud of. Well, buy a drink, Marshal. No, thank you. You just missed the fun. We were having old Thatcher on about his stock. He's not young anymore, Mr. Butler. But let me warn you about something. Sometime you may push him too far. Oh, we were just hurrahing him a bit. We didn't do any harm. Thatcher and his grandson are new out here. You find your fun somewhere else, Butler. Why don't you leave him be? Matt? You know, when you torment an old man like that, it makes you cheap. Real cheap. Matt? Sit down, Matt. You could uh, buy me a drink if you wanted. Yeah, sure. Uh, Sam, send over a drink for Miss Kitty, will you? I have to drink alone? Usually my partner drinks with me. Uh, Not tonight, Kitty. You mad about something, Matt? No, no. Tired, maybe. I uh, saw you talking with Ed Butler over there. He say something to set you off? Yeah, maybe that's it, Kitty. I don't know. Oh, thanks, Sam. There you are. That was old man Thatcher over there, wasn't it? Yeah. Whenever he comes in here, Butler gets him started on this new breed of horse Thatcher's got. Is that what it was tonight? Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, Happens every time he comes to town, Matt. He's an old man, Kitty. There's no way he can fight back. Well, Matt, it's not your worry. You can't keep Butler off his back any more than I can. They're like vultures circling a buffalo that's hurt, just waiting for the time when he finally goes down so they can settle for a meal. Matt. I'm thirsty after all. I think I will have that drink, Kitty. Sam! (laughs) 
Chester, if you'd run these papers over to Mr. Hightower. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Hmm. Another wanted poster on Johnny Ringo. Mr. Hightower's waiting for him, Chester. Yes, sir, but Johnny Ringo's out in Arizona. He never comes back this way. Chester. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. I'll take him right over. Oh, uh, is there anything for me to do while I'm down at the other end of the plaza? No, nothing I know of. Well, then I'll just wait around down at the depot then, Mr. Dillon, if it's all right. <laughs> the morning train's due in from St. Louis in half hour. <laughs> all right, Chester. Yeah. Marshal Dillon? Oh, good morning, Mr. Thatcher. Got a minute to spare? I have a favor to ask. Yeah, certainly. Come on in. Uh, Mr. Hightower's waiting, Chester. Yes, sir. Well, sit down, Mr. Thatcher. Uh, first of all, Marshal, I, uh, I want to thank you for what you did last night over at the Texas Trail. Oh, Butler and his crowd just had too much to drink, that's all. Well, maybe I did, too. Once I start, it's hard to stop. Then I get to argue. I'm too old to argue that way. Well, maybe you shouldn't go to the Texas Trail. Seems every time you do, Butler takes his pleasure riding you. Well, it's that I wanted to talk to you about. No? Well, go on. Well, Ed Butler's always said he's got the best horses around Dodge or anywhere else. Well, maybe he does, Mr. Thatcher. Mine are better. Well, I don't know anything about your stock. Marshal Dillon, Ed Butler's having breakfast right down the street at the Dodge house. I want you to walk down there with me. Now, look, Mr. Thatcher, I don't want to mix up in any personal problems between you and Ed. Well, this ain't completely personal, Marshal. We'll say maybe in a way. I come to you because I figure you're the one man in Dodge with nothing to gain. And you'll be honest. I got something here. I want you to take it. No? It's the... The deed to my ranch. Why are you giving it to me? I want you to hold that deed and come with me to meet Ed Butler. I'm going to challenge him to a grudge race. My quarter code against the best horse he's got. You mean you're putting up your ranch on this race? Yes, sir. And I want you to hold the stakes. Look, it's, uh... It's no business of mine, but you could lose, you know. No, sir. I don't figure I can. Mr. Fletcher, you and your grandson have been over here from Missouri better than a year now. Now, you know how these people are, men such as Butler and the rest. There's nothing more fun than ragging somebody. Somebody who fights back but isn't too strong. You're trying to lecture me, Marshal. Well, it's because you're new here that they're making it rough for you. You just don't know the ways yet. It's no good, Marshal. Look, Mr. Thatcher, you're putting up everything you got on this race. Now, what makes you so sure you can win? What's so special about this stud colt that you've raised? Uh, he's a little special in most every way, Marshal. His daddy was coal deck, and his mother was the best mare in Missouri. Oh, I know why Butler and the others laugh at him. Compared to some horses, he looks like a bulldog beside a greyhound. His head's short, and he carries it too low. He's built too close to the ground with bulging muscles and short legs. But I'll tell you one thing. He's just gone four, and as he stands now, he's the most horse west of St. Louis. And there are some like him in Texas now. And if I have any say, one day quarter horses will be all over the west. When a man gets to be my age, Marshal Dillon, he's got to stand behind what he believes. And I believe in this little horse. He's sleepy and he's quiet, but he can unwind like lightning. Hey, you got a feel for horses, haven't you, Mr. Thatcher? It ain't much of a man talks one way and thinks another. Uh, will you walk with me down to the Dodge house? Yeah. Yeah, I'll walk with you. Well, Butler, that's it. And Mr. Thatcher here has asked that I hold the purse. Wouldn't ask for anything more fair than that. Then you race? Why, sure, I'll race. You name the day and the time, I'll be there. This afternoon, then, across the river. Good enough for me. All right, we'll make it at 2 o'clock. I'll have Doc Adams there to look over the horses. They'll both be sound or there'll be no race. Is that agreed? That's good. And they'll run the way they are, shot or not shot. 
And Mr. Thatcher has suggested a distance of 400 yards. That's right. 400 yards? <laughs> Hardly worth running, but I'm willing. All right, since you accept the match, Mr. Butler, you'd best to come to some agreement on the bet with Mr. Thatcher here. What do you figure your ranch with everything on it's worth, Thatcher? Oh, maybe $4,000? That's high for just five, 600 acres, a few outbuildings, and a couple of old milk cows. I'll put 4000 against your deed. Marshal, I'll give it to Hank here. He'll bring it over to your office. All right, if you'll have it there by noon. Hey, how about a side bet for me, Mr. Thatcher? Well, I don't know. Hank? Hey, yeah, Jim, what? I seen a quarter mare named Bell run down Galveston last July. And I seen Thatcher's coat run a little. I'll take your side bet. Name it. 400 Double that, it's a bet. Good enough. Then it's 800 and I'll bet the quarter coat. Well, now, Mr. Thatcher, seems Jim Bales here don't have no more sense than you. Well, at least you're not alone. All right, then, everything's settled. Just one last thing, gentlemen. This is going to be a fair race. Well, no need to worry, Marshal. Ain't no reason to press my luck. Not against a jug-headed cayuse like Thatcher. Why, you know... All right, that's enough now. Come on, Mr. Thatcher. Let's get out of here, huh? Now, why don't you go on home? I'm going back to the office. You... You think I'm just an old fool, don't you? Yes, Mr. Thatcher, I do. You're headstrong and you're stubborn. But, uh, good luck to you this afternoon. You know, Matt, there have been horse races and dodge before lots of times. But I've never seen one where so many people got concerned. Why, the whole town's in on it. Everybody's betting one way or another. Yeah, I know. And I don't like it, Doc. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? Now, people like an excuse to celebrate. And this afternoon, there'll be whiskey running to help them. Whiskey and horses don't mix when there's money changing hands. Matt, uh, are you worried about Thatcher putting his ranch up on the race? He could lose his ranch, Doc. Oh. Well, doesn't he have a chance? No, I don't know. I don't think so. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? Oh, hello, Doc. Oh, Chester. Huh? Say, I, I was down at the bridge a few minutes back watching for Butler to take his horse across. I wanted to know which one he was running. Well? And I didn't recognize a horse. I thought probably it'd be a sorrel, but it wasn't. It was a horse I ain't never seen before. Well, what horse is it, Chester? Ed Butler ain't putting in no cow pony, Mr. Dillon. He's running a thoroughbred. Well, hmm. hey, you got a... Um, is that it, man? Mr. Thatcher's betting everything he has on this quarter horse of his to beat a cow pony. Now Butler's running a pure racing horse, a thoroughbred. Well, it's past one. Let's get over to the other side of the river. Return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, Tuesday nights you have two dates for thrilling mystery on CBS Radio. One's with Pam and Jerry North. The other's with yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, next Tuesday and every Tuesday on most of these same stations, enjoy John Lund as yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and Mr. and Mrs. North, both presented by CBS Radio. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. like half a dodge is over here, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, maybe more than that. Uh, Chester, see if you can find Ed Butler and old man Thatcher and bring him over here. Huh? Yes, sir. Hi, Matt. Oh, hi, Kitty. I haven't seen this many people in one spot since last year when Eddie Foy played the opera house. It's kind of a fiesta, isn't it? Yeah, in a way. <laughs> Nobody would think it to look at you. 
Uh, where's the finish line going to be, Matt? I want to see good. Uh, back up there about 50 yards. Oh, well, I'll go up and find me a place. Yeah, okay. Matt! Oh, Matt! Yeah, Doc? Oh, 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 here you are. Well, I've looked over both horses. They seem sound enough. Good. I don't get much call to check horses anymore. <laughs> Mostly it's babies these days. <laughs> Or maybe a gunshot wound. Doc, uh, who's going to ride for Butler and Thatcher, you know? Uh, Butler's got Hank Thomas, and I think Thatcher's a grandson's going to ride for him. Well, I hope the boy knows what he's doing. I think he does, Matt. He's got spurs and a switch. Well, that'll help. <laughs> uh, see, Matt, Thatcher's getting all liquored up. Well, that's his affair, isn't it, Doc? Yeah, but he's got a skin full. <laughs> you know how edgy he gets when he's that way? I sent Chester for him. He should be along anyway. The whole crowd seems kind of excited and nervy. <laughs> Maybe I'll pick up some business out there, huh? <laughs> That's not funny, Doc. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. Wait, Dylan. I found Mr. Butler, That's but I couldn't... Marshal. Where's Thatcher? Oh, I wouldn't know. Last time I saw him, he was pouring down some red eye. Preparing for the loss, maybe. Well, Mr. Hightower and Doc here are going to act as judges along with me. Chester will fire the starting gun. <laughs> this is all terrible fancy for just a whim of that old fool Thatcher's, ain't it? Ah, you may call me an old fool now, but, uh, but it'll be different after the race. You're drunk, Thatcher. Any law say a man can't win a horse race if he's drunk? Well, what's the matter? Need courage to bring your horse out here to the flat? All right, stay out of it, Butler. Mr. Thatcher, is your grandson all set? Yes, sir, Marshal. How about you, Butler? We're ready. All right, then tell your riders to take their horses down to those two buckboards down there. That'll be the starting line. You right. thought you'd fool me, didn't you, Butler? Bringing out that thoroughbred to run. Well, I don't care. I can still beat you. <laughs> You're talking an awful lot for a man I ain't worried. Don't ride me, Butler. I've had enough Oh, listen you. to me, Thatcher. I put up with your chatter long enough. Why are you... All right, that's enough. I'll you just see you. to it you win, Thatcher. I'll have your ranch and that colt you think so much of. Oh. Oh. What did you say? You heard me. Just make sure you win, if you can. Oh, what did you say about my coat? What did you mean? Well, if my bay mare wins, I get your ranch and everything on it. That includes your coat. No. No, that isn't right. Well, what about it, Marshal? You're holding the purse and drawing up all the rules, it seems. What about it? Butler's right, Mr. Thatcher. That's the way you made the bet. You're no good, Butler. No good at all. I didn't make the bet. All right, both of you move your horses down to the starting line. It's two o'clock. Hank, move that bay down those horses. Well, go on down, Mr. Thatcher. Uh, yes, sir, yes. Chester, you walk with him. Give him five minutes, and then you can start him off. Five minutes. Yes, Mr. Dillon. Well, it was right. Wasn't it, Mac? Thatcher's been drinking some. Yeah. Now, uh, come on, Doc. We'll look up Mr. Hyde. Uh, you know, Matt, this is like a holiday. It's like a fiesta. Yeah, that's what Kitty said. Oh, she's out here, too. Huh? <laughs> yeah, well, I guess maybe outside of Mr. Thatcher, the only person not enjoying himself is you. <laughs> Do I have to enjoy it, Doc? Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. Come on, Doc. Run. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait. Mr. Dillon? It's Mr. Thatcher. He's been shot. Shot? Where is he, Chester? Right over there. Laying on the ground. His boy's with him. All right. Let me through. Let me through. I'm not shot. Let me through here. Oh. Here, now, just a minute. No, no, no. It's, it's not much use looking, Doc. I, I know where it is. He's bad, Matt. What happened, Mr. Thatcher? And now I won't see him run. Mr. Thatcher, listen to me. Now I'll, I'll never know for sure if my colt could... What happened, Chester? You were with him? Mr. Dillon, I don't know. I, I was walking along, not thinking anything particular. Thatcher and Butler was up ahead, and then Thatcher drew on Butler, tried to shoot him. I shot him, if that's what you want to know, Marshal. Yeah, it was self-defense, Marshal. That's what it was, Mr. Dillon. But still, he was drunk. Man. You saw that for yourself. Then he tried to kill me. Hey, that's right, Marshal. What it says is right. That's the way it happened, Mr. Dillon. 
suppose now that uh, that forfeits the race, don't it, Marshal? Doc, will you take care of... Uh, get him into a wagon and back into town. I'll see you back there. Oh, sure, Matt. <clears throat> Oh, you mean, uh, will you give me a hand here now? Just well, what about that forfeit, Marshal? You just can't wait till a man's cold before you want his property, can you? Oh, it ain't that, Dillon. The race just... ain't forfeit. I'll run it. That's uh-huh. a Thatcher boy, Mr. Dillon. Come here, son. What's your name? I'm Lonnie Thatcher. I'm going to ride Granddaddy's colt. Well, now, look, maybe... Uh... I'm kin... Granddaddy was queer, kind of, but what he said about this cold is right. And I'm riding him in the race. Yeah, but with what's happened, Lonnie, maybe we should put the race off. We'll, we'll run it, sure, but not today, not now. I'll agree to put it off. Granddaddy'd like it best this way. We'll race. Gracious. They ain't a tear in his eye, Mr. Dillon. All right, if that's the way you want it. It's what I want. All right, then get on down to the starting line, both of you. Go on, Chester. Yes, sir. I was looking for you, Marshal. Are we going to have the race? Yeah. That's a good thing, you know. There'd be a lot of people disappointed if it didn't come off. And we wouldn't want that, would we, Mr. Hightower? How's that? The killing's hardly enough to make the day complete, is it? No, Marshal, I didn't mean anything wrong. It's just... A... Yeah, sure, sure. Just forget it. Uh, move on up to the finish line. I'll get a couple of these riders to clear the lane. All right, Mr. Dillon. Uh... You, you there. Would you ride down toward the start and make everybody move back and clear a lane? Huh? All right, everybody. Will, will you get back, please? Or would you clear the lane, please? Please. Please move back. All you people there. Move back. That's it. Well, it's time, Marshal. Yeah. What's Chester waiting for? It looks like the colt's acting up. I've never seen two different breed of horses run against each other. And that colt's kicking up a storm. Could make a good column for the paper, maybe. Come on, come on. Get a hold of him, kid. Don't you think it'd make a good column, Marshal? Oh. Oh. the colt by half a length. A quarter horse beat a thoroughbred. Now that is something to see. And it's a new kind of horse in these parts. Well, Marshal, you should be happy. Uh, because the boy won? And for that I am happy, yeah. Well, well, I got no complaint, Marshal. It was fair and square. If you gentlemen will excuse me, I want to get back to the office. Sure, Mr. Hightower. Uh, Marshal. Yeah? Look, Marshal, about what happened this afternoon about Thatcher. I didn't really hold anything against the old man. I'm sorry it happened. I told you sometime you'd push him too far. Now he's dead. Well, after all, Marshal, he drew first. Oh, I'm not saying you're a murderer, Butler. But you're small inside. The only feeling I got for you is contempt. You're responsible for the death of that man today, and yet there's nothing I can do about it. You're blaming me for everything? Ah, it's not you. I guess it's just people. Good day, Mr. Butler. Matt, I was looking for you. Where's Lonnie Thatcher, Kitty? Standing over there by his horse, crying. Maybe you ought to talk to him, Matt. I'm going to. Well, he... He doesn't want to see anybody. Some of us tried talking to him, and he... He just walked away. I'll see you later. Hey, boy. You better walk that horse. Any horseman who knows he shouldn't be standing around after running like that. Yes, sir. All right. I, uh, I got $4,000 for 
for you, Lonnie. Do you want to take it, or shall I give it to Banker Hodgson? I'll take it. It might be better to leave it in the bank. I said I'll take it. All right, son. Here. Thank you, Marshal Dillon. Lonnie, you, uh, you got any plans? Yes, sir. What? I'm going to do what my granddaddy always wanted to do. I'm going to raise horses like this stud coat. I'm going to breed them. Where are you going to do this? At your granddaddy's place? Yes, sir. That's a big spread for a boy to handle alone. I'll manage. How old are you, Lonnie? I've got $4,000 to help me. And I'm old enough to know my mind. Yeah, I guess you are. Well, you know something else, Marshal? I understand these quarter horses, just like my granddaddy did. When men in these parts get sense enough to be interested in new stock and want good mounts with a fine way of going, they can come and buy them from me, Lonnie Thatcher. Yeah. And if I'm any judge, that may not take too long, Lonnie. Thanks, Marshal Dillon. The boy's eyes were glistening as he turned and walked away, leading his stud cold home. Most of the crowd had left. They'd gone back into Dodge to rerun the race over a drink or two and talk about this new kind of horse, this stocky, heavy-muscled, quick-as-lightning quarter horse that had come to Dodge. And now it was getting... Oh, that boy, did he ever... I guess there was no question about it, Matt. Yeah, it was the... The boy and his horse had almost vanished from sight. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The special music is composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin and Joe Carnes, with Johnny McGovern, Harry Bartell, and Luke Krugman. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke is heard by our troops overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Tomorrow night, that great thespian Jack Benny attempts to show Tyrone Power how it should have been done, playing the power role in his own version of the movie Mississippi Gambler. Also tomorrow night, don't miss the latest laughs with Eve Arden as our Miss Brooks of Mary Madcap Madison High. George Walsh speaking, and remember, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy open fire on your funny bones Sunday nights on the CBS Radio Network.